Well, Toko, I hope you could hear all that from South Africa. Um, are you still, you're with us? Yes, yeah. I could. Okay, good. Um, perhaps you could um, tell us why this tool is going to be uh, useful for you on the ground in Africa and how it's going to help you to achieve uh, African targets for uh, the MDG uh, goals and beyond. Great. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And um, uh, I'm with the People's Health Movement, and I'm going to be talking both both on behalf of um, the global uh, secretariat because we've put out some information around the post MDG agenda, and also to reflect a little bit on the People's Health Movement South Africa and the work that we're doing. So the presentation next will be kind of going through just a little bit about government spending, much for who um, and for what. So I'm not too sure if there's a delay. Am I doing? Yeah, there we go. And then, so a little bit, that's just a bit of background around the people's health movement globally. Um, we're a series of networks in country uh, made up of NGOs, academics, and we're really organized around um, combating the economic and political causes of deepening inequalities in health worldwide. So this is why Government Spending Watch is quite important for, for our work. Um, and then the People's Health Movement South Africa, as you know, South Africa is often spoken about as a middle-income country. There's been a lot of talk about aid um, being withdrawn from South Africa. And um, so we have, within the South African context, precisely that, that um, issue about deepening inequality. South Africa really does re you know, kind of provide a model of, of um, the global inequalities that we see. I live in Cape Town, this huge divide. And so there are a number of issues that, that um, members and people are needing to engage with. And to be able to use the tool um, of Government Spending Watch would be useful. So I'm just going to go into a little bit about uh, government spending much who for and for what. So really, we see it as a tool for activists to undertake evidence-based advocacy and also a call for action um, and to answer the question about not meeting um, commitments. This is really then a call to see, to really follow the money and uh, to demand justice in the way that our budgets are used, both um, the national or regional commitments being made and how that, that filters down. So as a tool for activists to undertake evidence-based advocacy, um, you can see that I'm just going to show it in the report, but it gives you an example of this is the information that now I now have access to online um, that can make sense of. I can situate particularly for the people's health movement to be able to not only just talk about the health sector, but the social determinants of health. What's happening in gender affects health. Um, what's happening in environmental issues, again, will affect health. So that map really does provide um, a, a clear picture for how it is that um, activists in particular sectors can start driving the experiences that they're having and put it meaningfully into what the numbers are showing, which is a lack of commitment. And then um, here you can see this is just an example from the report. Um, are African countries meeting the Abuja target? Only one African country is, Malawi. Um, and you can see that South Africa is performing um, not as well as you would expect, given um, our GDP and our economy. Um, and so this, again, provides a way for both not only South Africans, but people in the region to really hold um, not only their governments, but international aid, um, international governments uh, to account for how it is that we need to um, address and reach, at least reach the future chart target. So the data for South Africa, as you know, South Africa is one of the world leaders in budget transparency, and that's um, according to the Open Budget Index that the IBC puts out. And uh, we found that um, from the, the data that, that there is quite a bit of, of um, detail available, including at the provincial level, and that they can, the, the information is, they are able to disaggregate between revenue source, government, and donor. And that's accessible in, a, in an annual report for any national. If you wanted to access the National Department of Health's annual report, 
you would be able to, to have that information. So in terms of transparency and accessing information, South Africa at a national level is, is, is doing really well for activists to be able to, to make the kinds of demands that they, they need to make. So that was just an example from sort of the South African example. So this brings me to the, the call for action, the second point. And I mean, from the, the people's health movement, health is a right. And for the, PH, for the PHM, the MDGs, whether we're meeting them or not meeting them, have not addressed the structural barriers to sustainable and equitable development. And we believe, nor were they designed to do so. So the government spending watch allows us to have a tool to explain and describe the ways in which these those twin um, uh, issues that you raised, Phil, about are not being met. Um, and that in order to be able to do um, uh, effective um, advocacy and lobbying and campaigning, social mobilization is essential. And we agree that the MDG has been able to provide a spotlight on these issues. And again, I'm going to keep repeating the term tool. Government Spending Watch is a new tool to provide research and facts and advocacy and uh, gives more meaning to demands when, when we're needing to be, to be making them, both around national spending. So the example I gave about South Africa, you can access provincial information um, that links then activists also to regional and global information. So we can situate South Africa in the region but we can also understand what kinds of commitments are not being met um, and how those affect regional security, for example. So an example is Zambia. Um, and then uh, I've taken this from, from the Government Spending Watch website um, and was fortunate enough when I was working with the IBP to be um, working in Zambia and seeing the kinds of issues that the Zambians were grappling with around accessing information, budget information in particular. And here is a success story of being able to, um, through uh, demanding that the political parties pledge and vote health for all, that they were really able to um, gain commitments from, from the, the, the new president, well, he's not so new anymore, but um, you know, by increasing the budget in the government's first year. So they, there's now an opportunity for both uh, civil society activists in Zambia to peg Zambia's improvement um, within the, the government spending watch over time, but also to come back to the very leaders that they have engaged with to say, you know, you, you committed this to us. We want to see where the money is and, and what, what are some of the barriers. And then I would like to take you to um, a South African example. This is this is a, a, a more, um, it's a subnational example of an organization called Indipuna Kwasi and another organization called the Social Justice Coalition, who have been doing a lot of work around uh, sanitation issues, but also linking that to um, local communities' ability to access information about, for example, the city of Cape Town. Um, and we can see, the, the, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but there's a picture of, of, of people saying sanitation is dignity. And what I found interesting when reflecting on the report and the numbers from a people's health movement perspective is that at a local level, you can see the replication of those commitments not being met. So um, in South Africa, there's huge issues around underfunding, under-resourcing around sanitation. Um, and it was found clearly uh, just recently, actually yesterday, the SJC um, completed a social audit and the city has, has um, acknowledged that there's been major spending issues around sanitation and access to decent toilets, which has been part of their campaign. So that's just an example of how at a, an aggregate level it can be, it can be um, useful. So this is just some suggestions, um, I sort of said an activist suggestions given the communities and the groups that I work with um, and many of our members in the people's health movement is that one, it needs to be in terms of thinking about how the government spending watch interface is used, we really need to think of creative ways to make it more user friendly. 
Um, so South Africa um, and in the region, cell phone um, accessibility is, is far wider. You're going to get wider reach. So I would really encourage um, you to think about how is it that we can represent this information so that I can take a flyer and make it accessible to communities that I'm working with around demanding access to health or what, how do you link a lack, not meeting a commitment on an MDG to the daily lives of somebody um, trying to access education, for example. So I just uh, wanted to illustrate what I was talking about, um, but also to think about making uh, some of the data cell phone accessible, given the, need, the way in which cell phone type technology is broadly more accessible in, in developing countries and particularly in sub, sub regions in Africa. Um, and then, really, um, what are the spending priorities? So I think the government spending watch provides us with an opportunity to talk about, well, if they're not meeting the commitments on the NDGs in terms of spending, what are they committing to? Um, so, again, it talks to what kinds of information, how can we link what we now know um, and, can, and, can, and now have hard, hard evidence about, how can we link it to the kinds of commitments that governments are making and perhaps not on behalf of the citizens or the people living in their countries. Um, so issues around tax regimes, progressive or not, there's been a huge um, just debate going on in South Africa around the tax pegging that's been taking place and how resources are being um, sort of moved away from essential services. Um, and something as simple as just removing the tax cap could provide enough funding for the national health insurance that's being debated at the moment in South Africa. So um, there are questions around how, how it is that we need to link um, and provide uh, tangible examples. That picture is showing about um, oil exports and, and, and talking about environmental issues. So what, what, is the, what is happening in terms of priorities and spending? And then the devil is really in the detail. So, I mean, this is a hard ask, and uh, this is a nice example that um, was given to me by the team, um, was that, you know, we could provide, the more detail we get in the data, the more we can disaggregate it. So this is an example of government health expenditure by province in South Africa, um, which would be extreme, is extremely useful for um, local community groups wanting to advocate for better services or um, and have something quite uh, sort of tangible to say, listen, you know, given the needs of our particular province, why is the per capita spending um, such and, and how do we, we need to make it or why are these inaccessible? Um, but again, the local is really where for um, civil society groups and communities that they're the brunt of the, the effects of the global inequities um, the more local the information, the more useful. And then lastly, uh, this is an issue that, again, it might be beyond the scope of the report, but I think what would be useful to think about is how do we link the debates and discussions around participation, um, particularly, uh, for example, uh, People's Health Movement South Africa is involved in the, in the in part of the regional go for health where they're trying to debate with communities and get communities talking about the post-NDG um, uh, agenda. But, you know, a fundamental tenet of human rights is that people have a right to participate. Um, and in South Africa and the region and internationally, um, people's civil and political rights are being curtailed, freedom of expression um, is being, you know, so in some ways, we want to talk about global campaigning and advocacy, but we also need to then address the ways in which citizens or activists are being um, are being muzzled or are unable to articulate their demands. So um, I think it's important that we address um, these issues as well to be able to meaningfully um, use the tool of government spending watch to get change to happen. And we know that it can, and that's that's one of the things that, that is really encouraging. And I think the, the, the website and the tool 
provides us now, as um, earlier stated, that we can really uh, now try and monitor in relation to the MDGs, uh, whether or not governments are committing to what they're saying to. But also we can link that to um, a discussion around if we're really going to make um, our and transform the way in which governance happens, we need to um, pay heed to our um, civil and political rights as well. Thank you. Thank you.